those wires, that one closest here, that thing is thicker by a long shot. Oh, way bigger than my wrist. That's a lot of weight. Look at the sag on these things. like winter. Okay, I want you to look at something here. That's the stove pipe for my wood stove. It's in here so I don't get burnt. And that's the wall, the concrete block wall where it goes out. That's the flange or whatever, the pipe goes up and goes out and then it goes up outside as an insulated piece. All this white that you can see here, I hope you can see it, goes all the way around, not so much in the bottom. Let me show you here if I can reach it in here without getting burnt. That's frost, look at that, watch. I don't know if you can see me, I see my fingerprints going down there. Get it over here, there we go. That. See, look at that spot right there, nice and clean and frost free, or frosty. I'm trying not to get burnt here. Look at that. That's all frost. Now, oh, gosh. The interesting part is, there we are, we follow the pipe down, way down to the stove. And what we find in the stove is a pretty fair fire. This stove's been burning for probably a, a relit it about half an hour ago. So inches from where that uninsulated pipe goes out, that frost is probably a quarter of an inch thick. And I want to tell you folks, that's some kind of cold outside. It's really, really chilly. When you first get the raw, fresh hide off the animal, lay it out flat like this. Make sure you fold back all the edges, expose all these little bits and pieces, and salt it really well. And I use um, a fairly fine salt. You, you want non-iodized, um, just regular salt, basically. And put it on, no, and this, this is a, sort of a small dough hide so I used probably a pound and a half of salt and there's a lot of salt get down there with your rubber gloves your hands whatever and pour just pour it on there and rub it in and uh, and kind of work it into all the little crevices and corners and make sure everywhere gets some salt and then you fold the hide up into inside to inside like that and keep folding it up nice and fold it over and roll it all up into a little you know a little bundle there nothing don't pack it tight and uh, and then you put it in that Tupperware bucket or that Rubbermaid bucket and just let it sit for about um, well overnight or maybe an extra little longer than that maybe a day two days even it's not gonna hurt as long as you've got enough salt on it Tip the bucket up slightly on a bit of an angle so because it'll pull a lot of moisture out of this hide. Um, blood and, and just juices and whatever. And you don't want the hide sitting in that puddle. So you don't want the bucket left sitting flat on the ground. So just put a 2x4 or something under one end of it and just, to, just so that you know, the hide's sort of tucked on the high side and, the, and it can drain down to the, to the lower side. After about a day or two of that, you take it out, shake it all off, uh, the loose salt and reapply the same amount again working it in really well uh, you empty your bucket out while you're doing that get it all worked in for the second time put it back in your bucket and do the same thing again now you can actually store it that way or not, and if I'm going to store it for a longer period of time I'll also um, rub some borax into it and that will help preserve the hide for a very long time as long as it doesn't stay as long as it's not damp as long as you let it dry out then we'll go on to the tanning section that I filmed prior to this okay what we've done so far is we've just uh, the hide was skinned of course um, and then it was thoroughly salted 
with a non-iodized salt, and then I put it in the bucket here, and I inverted it, or not inverted, but I tilted the bucket slightly with the hide up at the top, because the salt draws a lot of moisture out of the skin of the hide, and so the moisture can puddle up down at the bottom uh, without the hide actually sitting in it. What that does is it tightens up the hide so that the hair won't slip. So you really want to not forget to do that process because that's really one of the most important things you're going to do. After about uh, 24 to 36 hours, I took the hide off, out of the bucket, I cleaned up, dumped the bucket, I rinsed it out, shook the excess salt off the hide and I repeated the process. And don't, don't spare the salt. You can't put too much salt on, it won't hurt anything. So, uh, you know, salt's relatively cheap if you want a decent hide. So now that was, uh, actually that turned out to be about a week and a half ago because I got sidetracked with other things. This is the ulu type thing that I made. What we want to do now, I've shaken the salt off, you can see that there's still quite a bit on here. But what I want to do now is make absolutely certain that every little teeny bit of this flesh is, let me just get some of this started here and fat is scraped off. See what I mean? Now that looked fairly clean. But look at the, look at, look at, see all this stuff? This, this thin membrane layer will prevent the uh, tanning solution from getting deep into the actual hide. So this is another, all these processes, if you want a good hide, these are all part of it. Especially since in this case I'm doing it with the hair on. So that's going to make, uh, you know, a great big difference to the finished product in order for it to still have the hair on you know, quite some time from now. It should last for years if you do this right. And I'm going to use the Trapper's formula, those orange bottles. Now I used it once before on a hide that I had removed the hair from. And that worked really well. So this will be my attempt to do it with the hair on. And since it's a trapping formula, that's probably what it's really for, is to preserve, uh, you know, the, the hides of fur-bearing creatures there. So, now this will probably, I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. This is going to take quite a while, probably take me half an hour to do a decent job on this. Maybe it's, it's in between those, those several days when it sat, I left it outside. So it's not actually frozen, partly because of the salt. Um, but it's quite stiff, so it's going to make this a little bit tougher. So I, I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I'm going to keep working on this, and I'll bring you back when things get, uh, you know, when something new happens. Let me just get the camera off here. Now, once I'm finished the scraping part here, would be probably a good time for me to pull that together and get a couple stitches of, uh, you know, like that heavy wax thread from my speedy stitcher, something like that. tote that I carry this around and that I soak it in, kind of tucked down under the table here a little bit so it sticks out, catching all this debris, just makes it easier to not have it all over the floor. See the size is, you can actually grab that and the way that just pulls off, that's just basically fat and membrane. That's exactly what you don't want. Look at this, my gloves in the way I know, but look at how much of this stuff is cut, look at this thing. All this stuff, that membrane, seals that hide. I know I've said it several times, but I can't, I can't tell you how important that is. A lot of people will cut this thing off so it's rectangular or oval or whatever. Uh, to me, that just seems unnatural. And when I lay this thing out, uh, you know, on the, on a table or on the floor or or drape it over something or whatever I end up doing with it, I think it looks. I just like the look of all these extra little bits. Now that's a lot of extra work to get down into these bits and pieces here. 
Yeah. But, uh, you know, I just like the way it looks that way. So that's what we're going to do. In the meantime, we're going to keep tugging away at this stuff and various other bits of it. Look at that. Oh my God, it's actually pretty good because this is saving me a lot of actual scraping time. Look at that. That's good. Keep going, boy. Look at this. All right. I'm liking this. Holy cow. Okay. Now there's a lot of scraping that I didn't have to do. This bit right here on this back leg and you can see this hole with the darkness around it. It's not actually a hole but these there is here in that shape. I believe that's the part of the back leg part way down where the tarsal gland was on the buck deer. And when you see them at their scrapes and they do the licking branch thing and they paw away a little bit then they pee into the scrape. What they're doing they sort of hunch up a little bit and they're peeing down the inside of their back legs. And what happens, why they're doing that, uh, is because the urine dribbles over the tarsal gland, which is on this side, right here, and activates a scent gland in that tarsal gland, which dribbles down into the pit, uh, the rut pit, or the, or the scrape. And uh, that's a very attractive thing to the does, apparently. Uh, so something that you can learn from this is that when you got your buck and you're skinning them and so on cut that tarsal gland out it's that that kind of knobby looking thing on the inside of the back leg just about the where the knee would be uh, kind of a hard looking callousy sort of a thing and and dry it and save it and then you can buy the doe urine or the buck urine or whatever at the sporting goods stores and next season uh, when you're ready to go hunting, you can make a mock scrape or even find one that's already a, a real scrape and hang this tarsal gland about chest high from, from the licking branch after you dribble and soak it a little bit, just for a couple of minutes. You don't have to soak it overnight or anything um, with that urine that you've got. And that's a super attractive thing for the bucks to come into that scrape. Um, you can also buy these tarsal glands at some of the sporting goods stores, so shop around Keep that in mind because that's a real good tip for drawing a good buck into where your, your blind is or your hide. Uh, by setting yourself, of course, you've got to do all the normal things like be downwind and everything else. But uh, you want to make sure that you've got yourself set up nicely and well hidden, no movement, and then get this tarsal gland hanging out there. And it won't be long, especially if you have a trail camera so you can see, it won't be long before the bucks are checking that thing out because it puts out a... I don't know if we can smell it, but the pheromones or whatever that's in there, it really works. That took probably closer to an hour. Uh, the, whole, the hide is quite moist still, even though it's been around for several days, probably over a week now, because the salt, even though it pulled the moisture out of the, of the hide and locked the hair in, uh, it still doesn't let the hide dry out. Plus, of course, it was in a bin with the lid on. So, you now there's a spot here that didn't really get salted so I'm going to have to determine whether I'm going to be able to save that or just just nick that piece off you don't want anything left uh, you know that's going to cause there's a little bit over here as well you don't want anything left on there that's going to cause it to spoil or, or you know cause any smell or anything in the future which is unlikely you know I could probably salt that really well right now and that's very likely what I'll do the other alternative what a lot of people do and I could too if I wanted to, would be to take a, a stretching frame or perhaps a, uh, even just a 2x4x8 sheet of plywood and tack this up on the plywood with little nails about every 2 or 3 inches apart, just finishing nails or something, and stretch it out and let it dry a little bit. And uh, that will really help as it gets dry, then any little bits of this stuff that's left, well that wasn't attached, I, I did pretty good on this, I took my time. But any little bits of that that's left, um, you, can, you can get that back off. If you stretch it tight and flat, like on a piece of plywood, and let it dry until it's kind of hard, because um, it'll get hard kind of like a piece of wood, you could then take uh, a cordless drill or something with one of those little rotary um, wire wheels and, and carefully go over the hide you can't do it now because it's too wet and it's too, it's too grabby, but if it was dried out and very flat because you dried it on wood, you can go over it with that wire wheel and help take some of that stuff off and, and make it even you know nicer. Depends on your final use for it, I suppose. 
I'm not going to do that. What I will do, I was going to put this directly into the, uh, into the, into a salt water bath for probably eight or nine hours. But I think what I'll do is I'll just let this sit here for maybe two hours. I'll find something to do, always something to do, uh, and let this sit for two or three hours. I'll come back, just go back over it. It should tighten up just a little bit by then. It won't be, won't be dry, but it should firm up a bit. And just see if that there's any little bits and pieces that I can do a better job on. After that, it goes back into the tub. I'll clean the tub out in a fairly strong brine solution for about eight to 10 hours. Now, you don't absolutely want to leave it much longer than that, if any longer that, than that, because if you leave it in there too long, then it will loosen the hair, and the hair will actually, you can pull it out with your fingers if you leave it in there for three days or so. So you absolutely don't want to do that if your intention is to keep the, hide, the hair on the hide, which for me it is this time. So that's it for now. Uh, we'll let it dry a little bit, as I said. I'll come back in a couple of hours and uh, make sure everything is scraped off that I can get any little bits and pieces off yet. And then it'll go into the brine solution. Uh, now it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So when I come back, that's a little too long. I don't want this to be going all night. Um, what happens, what I'll do is I'll, if this is in good order and I don't want to start the salt and solution now, what I'll do is I'll fold it skin over, fold it back up, put it back in the container with the lid on, just to keep it, you know, from drying out any further. And then maybe around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock tonight, before I go to bed, I'll, I'll put that brine solution, I'll dunk it in there, and I'll leave it until morning. And then 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, I'll come out and start the final process. We'll see you then. Okay, the hide's been soaking in here uh, for just over eight hours. My glove on. And it's, yeah. It should be good. Now that was, as you probably saw, a fairly, oh, look how dirty it is, <laughs> um, a fairly strong saline mixture. So what we're going to do now, oh yeah, that's looking good. What we're going to do now is dump this water out, and then I'm going to take some Dawn dish detergent. I'll rinse the hide since there was quite a bit of, of dirt in it. And I'm going to wash the hide in this bucket. We'll rinse everything tidy. Wash it with the with the just sort of room temperature water with the Dawn dish detergent. We'll wash it real good for maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and then I will hang it up. And it can start to dry overnight. It won't dry thoroughly that fast, so I'm not not too concerned. I've turned the heat down in this uh, in this garage, so um, it will drip dry almost more than anything. You want it to get pliable but, you know, sort of four-fifths dry, where you can still work it, and then we'll apply the tanning formula. We'll leave that in there overnight, tomorrow, and, uh, and then after that will be a couple of days uh, of gently stretching it just by hand and working it to, to just bend it and twist it and make it soft. So we're two-thirds of the way, three-quarters of the way maybe, so let's get on with the washing. Let me just dump this out. I won't bother showing you all that because I'm going to need both hands. And I don't really have a proper place to put the camera here right now. So I'm going to rinse this out. I'm going to dump this, rinse it, and bring you back when we uh, start washing it. Some detergent here. That's Dawn detergent. We'll just... This water is now lukewarm. much nicer nice and clean and white oops hope that didn't splash on the camera it is actually I didn't think it would be ready yet but that's actually pretty good it's just slightly moist but as you can see here it's still quite flexible I wanted to hang it so that it would dry from the fur side as well but wasn't really an option today I just had too much on the go in here so what I'm going to do is I've uh, flipped our tarp over on the bench so I'm just going to move this over to that spot. I've got the uh, tanning solution has to sit in some hot, hot tap water for about 30 minutes. So that's doing that now. And uh, I'll get this laid out on the bench and we'll be ready to go. I should have brought my sewing stuff and stitched that up, but I'll do it later, I guess. See where it's drying out pretty good here. You know, there's a, a lighter spot here where I had it rolled over the, 
that support and uh, I had set a log on it just so it wouldn't slide off and stay fairly vertical. So it's a bit dirty and still damp underneath where that was sitting. So some of that I'm going to trim I think is pretty, pretty rough. Uh, that leg section there is part of it's okay but I think the very end of it probably I can trim off. But basically it's looking pretty good. See this, this little tatter here, that's, that's nothing. So I can probably just kind of take this off around here, sort of. This is, some of it's quite dry in the middle here, but other parts is not so much. So I've taken this rag and just kind of been blotting it a bit. I was going to apply that tanning solution right now, but I may, I may wait for another hour or two just for this stuff to, just to get that last little bit of drying off here. I'm not using this hide for, you know, for clothing or anything. I'm not planning on making a, well, actually, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. It was there, so I tanned it. You never know. I'll use it for something. Now, after this has been dried thoroughly, and actually after the tanning has been done, uh, and it's dried, and it's finished, you have to work it you know, just back and forth over, uh, you know, the, an, an edge or something, not too sharp, but uh, on, the, on the hide side, because it, when it dries after the tanning, it will be a little bit stiff. So then you have to work it and pull it and, and soften it up to make it that really soft, almost velvety kind of feel to it. But at, once it's dry and it's still in that somewhat stiff stage, you can still uh, take your wire wheel or whatever on your, on your uh, cordless drill and very gently take off more of these little bits like that just this doesn't want to come off it's just tiny tiny and I scraped and scraped I don't like it being there but um, I don't think it'll hurt anything but anyways we'll see how it goes here I think I'm going to leave this for a couple of hours and and uh, and come back and do the whole thing then this has been warming as I was saying for a good half hour and just you know in fact I don't think you want to boil it but it really needs to be warmed up in um, really hot tap water so I did that now I'm just going to pour some of it on here and then spread it around rub it in I have a second bottle because this one was already open and I don't know oops, if I have enough here I rub it in really carefully you want to get it into every tiny little crevice. Anything that this doesn't get on doesn't get tanned, and then of course it won't it won't last. It'll it'll spoil in the future. So you want to rub it on good, and after you do that, um, you can let it sit for a little bit. And if you see some spots, by the time you're getting to the you know past the, the all the way down to the far end of it, sort of thing. Look back at, at the part where you started, and if it looks like it's starting to dry out a little bit already, it's too soon, and you want to add a little bit more into it, because it will start, hopefully, and if the intention is for it to actually soak in, of course. So, so that's what we're going to do here for the next few minutes. I turned the camera off, but it's probably not a good plan right now. So that's looking pretty good there. Let me work it in anywhere where there's little nicks or anything. Just make double sure anywhere around these edges. I don't want to get it all over the hair. Um, I don't think it'll hurt the hair other than it might discolor it though, which I you know, don't, don't really want it to do. So I'll, I'll just get this off the edges here and all over it. That looks pretty good right there. Okay.
take your time. It's not a race. Make sure you get it in. I'm starting to feel it get slightly tacky, so I'm not going to push too hard. And I'm going to have to uh, slide this hide around a little bit, so I'm probably going to have to shut the camera off. But all I'm going to do is slide it forward uh, and slide the side a little bit so I can get down onto these edges and, and make sure I've got everything. Once that's done, I'll turn it back on for this. We're going to fold it over inside to inside. I'm going to fold it over and fold it up and make a nice bundle out of it. And it's going to sit like that for uh, about 16 hours. So basically it's, uh, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning here. So this is probably, I'm probably just going to let it sit till, you know, maybe 7, 30, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then we unravel it, uh, unfold it and hang it up somewhere, sort of open it up where it's exposed and uh, hang it up somewhere for three or four days as it starts to, to dry in. And during that time, from time to time, you're going to come and you're going to work it. You're going to, you know, maybe have a, a stump or uh, wherever you, whatever you've got and you're just going to rub it back and forth, you know, over and over and see what you can do to soften it up because it will dry, even with this stuff, reasonably hard. I've really soaked it. Now this bottle had a little bit out of it. I can't remember what I tanned with it, but it had maybe, you know, that much out of it. Uh, maybe an inch off the top. So it was probably, you know, seven eighths of a bottle or five sixths or whatever, but more than three quarters. Now that hide wasn't really a full hide. Whoever skinned it, um, you know, didn't take much. Now they, you know, whoever it was, um, I'm sure wasn't intending to use it for tanning. So all they wanted to do is get the hide off the meat, and they did. Subsequently, we have some holes, but that's not a big deal. I think the reason, it usually takes a full bottle to do a full-size deer hide, but this was a doe, not a huge doe, so I got lucky. I really didn't want to have to open a second bottle and use like, you know, a quarter of it or less, and then have it sitting around open again. But uh, fortunately, but I didn't want to skimp on it and, and not do a proper job, so luckily, it worked out. I really was able to hose it good. And uh, so now we let it sit. It sits like this for, like I said, about uh, well, 16 hours, 18 hours, something like that. So first thing tomorrow morning, I'll unravel it and lay it out and let it start to dry. And then over the next two or three days, uh, maybe every couple of hours, not during the night, of course, but every two or three hours, whenever I'm passing by, I'll pull it and stretch it and, uh, you know, rub the the skin side against a, a log or something not hard you don't want to tear it but just enough to, to sort of break the fibers and make it soft again so we'll see you then so there's our hide now I've had it hanging inside here uh, it was in my indoor part of my wood room. It's been about 24 hours. As you can see, if I get close enough here, I don't know if you can see right there. It's still... No, I put quite a lot of that... Uh, don't timber, don't touch it. That tanning formula on there. And in little corners and crevices. This is terrible lighting. Uh, it's still kind of damp. Now what we're doing here is it's just a piece of 2x6. I've been rubbing this with a... Uh, I had made an axe handle. Made an axe handle and I haven't used it yet. So I've got the, the handle here I made and so I was just using that uh, to... to okay, I've got this hide all over me to push against the hide on the floor so I could just rub it. But you just have to keep working it. And this is... This is, you don't have to really heavily, heavily muscle up on it, but this is the tedious part. And it takes about three days off and on. And as you're going here, you know, some of the hair will come out. That's, you know, especially along the edges here. That's just, that's just the way it's going to be. Don't panic. If you get chunks in the middle somewhere starting to fall out all over the place, that's probably a, a, not a good sign that you... You know, you didn't get the salting done at the beginning quick enough to, to tighten up the hide and lock the hair into it. Um, whatever the case may be, but just work your way around the hide, into the middle, out to the edges, whatever. And just keep, keep bending it. Just keep flexing it. 
keep those fibers from, if you let them dry without doing this, they'll dry st stiff in a straight line because they haven't been flexed or moved, and it'll dry like a board, like, and I mean like a piece of two by four, or like a piece of plywood. And if it's like that, you're really never going to get it soft after that, unless you start the whole process over. You, you're going to have to soak it and you know, you're going to have to do the whole thing again. So not the best plan. And uh, like I said, you do this off and on. It takes two, maybe three days. You don't want to dry the hide with any heat. I try not to put even any fan on it or anything. I just let it air dry its natural way. And uh, you know, you don't want it to rush. You definitely don't want it to rush because you need time to do this. And this is this can be tiring. You know, it's awkward. So you want to. Just work away at it for, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, put it down, come back to it, whatever. Whatever you can do without, you know, bust yourself, uh, you know, working on it or whatever. But do it. You want to do a good job. Timber, leave it alone. Hey, leave it alone. And, uh, Probably two to three days, and like I said, you know, you're going to do this, you know, just a few minutes at a time, half an hour, whatever you can do. I mean, if you can do more and just keep working your way through it, that's awesome. You know, the more you do it, the sooner it's done. You'll get hairy. <laughs>